Okay, so let's continue from the previous lesson where we added normal map and a roughness map to our uh, wood texture to the object. All right, so right now is um, we can't do much with our um, cube right here regarding how big those planks of wood are. So um, we can do something with our UV editing. Uh, where we can increase the size and whatnot, but you don't want to control it that way. We just want to make sure that that's properly laid out. So what we want to do is what we call uh, tiling or changing the size of this, okay? So let's first make it a little bit obvious what we're working on. So I'm going to unplug the uh, roughness and the normal map. So we're just looking at it as a uh, as a color map, okay? So let me turn on the screencast. Let's see. Uh, it doesn't look like it's working, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so um, what we need first is to uh, add a, uh, a texture coordinate to this. So I'm going to go add input texture coordinate okay i'm going to repeat that one so if you look, look add input texture coordinate so if you look uh, you can also do keyboard shortcut shift a input texture coordinate okay, i'm going to put it right here because we're going to want to match all the tiling on all three but let's concentrate on the first one first next we want to add mapping so add vector mapping. There's actually a keyboard shortcut that you can just do this, but I want to show it to you how it's done manually. So, All right, so let's take a look. Um, we have vector input here and vector output. So obviously this will connect to that. What we want to change is the UV, how it's actually being scaled. So UV is plug into vector. Okay. And we only care about the scale at this point because you can rotate stuff and move things. Okay? And then vector goes to the vector input of the color map. You didn't see anything change right here until we go with scale. So 1, 1, 1, forget Z for now, just X and Y. So how many times do you want to repeat it across horizontal or vertical is the question here. So if I increase the number on X, you can see what's the top right here. You see, I'm like 3.5, so you can see it repeated three and a half times this way. So you got smaller planks of wood, but the length is the same because we only manipulated the X. You see it? So if I manipulate Y right here, we are increasing the number of repeats this way. So by doing this, we got kind of like smaller planks of wood. All right? But be careful with this. CZ0, uh, all their textures are seamless, as far as, I'm, uh, as far as I know, or what I've used. Uh, however, when you do too much of this, you create a more a uh, phenomena where the repeating pattern, and you start seeing this dancing uh, artifact on your screen. Okay, so you don't want your uh, uh, you don't want that. So you got to be careful with that one. So that's basically how you change it so just the scale x and y okay now let's plug our normal map back all right we're going to see some issues here where our normal map is not matching the size of the color map because remember we shrunk the vector value on that one right here so, in order to fix that, simply plug also, let me prioritize the bot, vector on, vector on this one, on the normal map, and as you can see, it matches all of that now. So, whatever you change on this one, it just keeps matching it, no matter what you do on this one. We do the same thing, of course, with the roughness map. And of course, I got to plug that to the rough. Place. All right. Otherwise, your shininess will not match. Okay. 
All right, so watch this when it's not plugged. It still remembers the old shininess. I mean, you can kind of get away with it because uh, if you're not really paying attention, you just have all that shininess all over the place. But if you want it specific to that one, you click on vector. Okay, so as you can see here, let's recap. We have texture coordinate mapping, plug to all this, vector, and the usual one. So this is the minimum that you should be using your uh, textures from now on. Of course, there's more, it's more complicated than this. But for now, whenever we do our project, this is the expected setup that you have. Not that you have to always change your scale 3.5 to 3.5, you know, to match it. No, it's just so that um, uh, we don't get that massive kind of brick um, uh, sample that we got from the previous one, okay? So let me actually open that one and then show you this issue here. All right, so in general, um, we're just going to leave this as a cube. Okay, we're going to go to shading here. We're going to apply the uh, the brick. It'll be more obvious here because we're going to apply the base color, normal map. Uh, let me turn on here, uh, screencast. All right, so add vector normal map. All right, we'll see that. And then we'll add our uh, roughness. I'll change that to non-color. Move all of this down here. It's our normal uh, roughness map. Plug that directly, so we'll do a shortcut. So we can, when we when we grab our Shift A um, converter color ramp, I can just drop it in here, and that should work. And let's just move this a little bit here, then control it with that one. All right, so we get some shininess on the brick, not on the mortar. Okay, so now let's apply the uh, what we've learned. Shift A, input texture coordinate. Let's put it right here. Shift A or add vector mapping. Okay, so we'll add our UV to the vector. Vector on all the vector of all the different ones. And actually, here, you gotta change that to non color, I forgot. Okay. Yeah, I see Shannon is in there. All right, so now let's say we wanted a more um, realistic brick size on this. So we can do our scale. Let's match it, let's say three by three. All right, there you go. A more practical example of that. All right, that's what texture coordinate and mapping. 